why God says the Vatican City is Babylon out of his word, which in English is the authorized version of 1611, the Bible that contains the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask everyone to please look at the screen or turn in your Bibles. I'm going to read out of Revelation chapter 17, verses 4 through 6. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stone and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. I'm going to go into this presentation by uh, testifying of my own experiences being raised in the Roman Catholic Church, and what I was taught as a young person about the Vatican. Uh, the Vatican is an extremely wealthy church. I don't think anyone can count her true net worth. Uh, but she is influential over the entire world. And that's what I'm going to get into today. Uh, you can see the photos on the screen represent uh, the golden cup and the abominations contained therein. Whether it's uh, the red wine or the communion host that the Catholic Church claims is the literal flesh and literal blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which gives life if you consume it. So the purpose of this lesson is to define Babylon and go by some of her other names, uh, to cover some key scriptures in God's word concerning Babylon. I'm going to talk about the Pope as Antichrist, not only from a Christian perspective, but by uh, some of the text found in the Catholic Bible. Uh, Vatican prayers against God's word. I'm going to give some examples there. Uh, I'm going to talk about A Bridge to Babylon, which happened to be a film that was released, oh, maybe about five years ago, that I put an extensive amount of work in. And uh, some of the, the major theme of that film I'm going to dis discuss I'm also going to include slaves and aliens very briefly there as well, because that's a part of uh, the subject matter. And then I'm going to give a conclusion. So what I'm hoping is that this is uh, uh, some new material for people, and they'll be able to learn from it, share it with uh, loved ones, with anyone that they know that is Roman Catholic, anyone that they know that is under the power of her merchandise uh, and her false Bibles, uh, the modern Bibles in the markets today. Uh, and that's what, that would be a, an apostate Protestant, for example. Uh, it's important that we get the truth out to people and that we uh, do God's will and uh, do this in a decent and orderly fashion. So Babylon, Vatican, dictionary definitions, I'm going to take it back to the Webster's Dictionary of 1828. The Vatican in a secular dictionary, it says the definition in Rome, the celebrated church of St. Peter, and also a magnificent palace of the Pope situated at the foot of one of the seven hills on which Rome was built. Hence the phrase, the thunders of the Vatican, meaning the anathemas or denunciations of the Pope. Uh, I think that's a fair definition. Uh, I don't think Noah Webster used any personal prejudice in his work, but uh, Rome does sit on seven mountains or hills, and it says in God's word, Revelation chapter 17, verse 9, And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. The woman is referring to the great city Babylon. So that's one key that we have in getting her identity. But there's many, 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 uh, if you're familiar with God's word, uh, many areas where God defines uh, the Vatican City as Babylon. Uh, it says in Revelation chapter 11, verse 8, 
that uh, the great city is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. And Vatican City is also a country. So Sodom is a city, Egypt is a country. So spiritually, those of us that are saved have spiritual minds. So we are taught by the Holy Spirit to think of a city and a country that's in rebellion against God. That's the Vatican City. It's both a city and a country. Uh, so that's yet another key. Uh, they are the church of Satan. They're a political and religious power that reigns over the kings of the earth, and they deceive all nations, as God says. God will judge Babylon and punish her for rebellion against him. He wants people to come out from all of her deceptions, not just the Catholics, the apostate Protestants, and all of those that are unsaved on earth. Uh, so it's important that we understand what God says. I'm going to cover some key scriptures regarding Babylon, and this is all out of the authorized version of 1611. So I'm going to give uh, the, the references to what specific scriptures I'm referring to and what God says. So the top line is uh, in reference to Revelation 17.1 and Ezekiel 16, verse 26, Vatican is the great whore. Okay, Her Bibles, plural, are made from different manuscripts, not the received text of the Christian Bible. So I want people to realize that the Vatican Bible comes from entirely different underlying manuscripts than the received text of the Christian Bible. Uh, the next line down, she sits on seven mountains, um, seven mountains slash hills. Those are the ones you can see the seven that are named there. Uh, that's another uh, part of scripture that defines who Babylon is. Uh, the next line down, she reigns over the kings of the earth. And there's many tactics that the Church of Satan uses to reign over the kings of the earth. But you can go to Google Images and you can just put world leaders kissing Pope's ring or presidents kissing Pope's ring or anyone kissing the Pope's ring. And you can see the reverence that is given to the papacy. And, and she's got many ways of controlling the political powers in this world, and I'm going to get into that later. Uh, the next line down, she has a golden cup in her hand. Uh, they claim, as I showed earlier, the cup of communion is Jesus Christ, flesh and blood, but it's also in reference to her doctrine, which is corrupt. She pours out filth against the Most High. Her doctrine, which I'm going to also talk about, is directly against God. Uh, the next line down, she's arrayed in scarlet and purple, vestment colors of the clergy. Uh, you can look in Google Images and, and type in scarlet and purple Catholic clergy and, and you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, and then the final line down, she's headed by Lucifer, the king of Babylon. That's the title that God gives Lucifer. He is the king of Babylon, the god of this world. And Babylon is the religion of this world that is controlled by a, a power that is both a city and a country. A small power, but the home of devils and, and foul spirits. Also in Revelation chapter 18, verse 13, Vatican has slaves, uh, both in a literal sense and also in a spiritual sense found in her Bibles. Uh, the next line down, uh, the Vatican has an ape and alien theme in their Bibles, Okay, which their Bibles are also called the merchandise of gold, silver, and precious stones. Uh, if for those of you that understand spiritual terminology when the Lord teaches us, but you know they're they're behind evolution theories, uh, Bigfoot, uh, all these alien agendas, etc. Uh, you know you'll find the Vatican supporting these doctrines in some way, shape, or form at some point. Uh, Vatican also gets rich through the merchants of her doctrines, so. Those that are televangelist or DVD salesmen or book salesmen or anybody that thinks they're a Christian celebrity or wants to try to make uh, profits off of God's wisdom, uh, she sells and gets, you know, gives her wisdom to these individuals who become rich. They get many views on YouTube. They get, sell many DVDs. They, they get their own TV programs. They sell their great authors, they're praised by men, and they're beloved of the world. But 0% of them use the unbroken testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the authorized version of 1611, which those of you that have 
listened or watched some of my videos know it's absolutely not the AV 1611 is not the King James Bible that is sold in the markets today so she's basically taking care of breaking the scripture on a worldwide level so that nobody understands what God teaches the Saints the very few people the very small remnant of saved people on this world are on the earth uh, the Vatican is also, as I mentioned before, a nation and a city. Uh, they're, a, they're a habitation of devils, the Church of Satan, who is, the Satan is called Lucifer. Um, and then I finally uh, put at the bottom, God tells his people to leave the Vatican, come out from her, my people, uh, so that they're not condemned to an eternity in the lake of fire because the world is condemned already. We're born unto trouble. You have to be born again spiritually out of this world to escape an eternity in the lake of fire. That's what God says. Uh, they, uh, Vatican encourages uh, vain repetitious prayers, rosaries, novenas. I'm going to get into the, uh, that a little bit later in this presentation. Uh, the Vatican uh, says to pray to dead people. Uh, if you say a rosary or a novena, you're praying to dead people. Uh, they bow to graven images. You'll see, and I'll show maybe a couple pictures of Catholic people bowing to statues and, you know, uh, praying to them as well. And if any Catholics deny that they pray to statues, then I'll volunteer and say, when I was Catholic, I prayed to statues. Because that's what you do when you're a Catholic. You pray to everything except the Lord Jesus Christ. The true Lord Jesus Christ, not the false Christ of the Vatican. Okay, uh, it says in Matthew chapter 23, verse 9, uh, calls the clergy father. So in the Catholic Church, the priests are called father by the Catholic people, but that's forbidden by God. It says in Matthew chapter 23, call no man your father on earth. Uh, call no man on earth your father. Uh, they also call Mary a perpetual virgin, which is rebellion against Luke chapter 2, verse 7. Uh, Rome chapter 3, verse 10, they say Mary was born without sin, but God says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Um, probably 99% of Catholics, if I asked them what the Immaculate Conception doctrine is, I'm confident they wouldn't be able to explain it to me. Uh, but it is the doctrine of the church that says that Mary was born without sin. Uh, and they say to pay money, the Vatican does, to forgive sins. If you look in the book of Tobit, uh, chapter 12, verse 9, verse nine, it says that alms deliver from death. And uh, in, in essence, uh, if you pay alms, you get your sins forgiven. But you can also reference uh, Hebrews chapter 10 and Acts chapter 8 there. Uh, in Revelation chapter 17 and, and places in Jeremiah and Zephaniah, uh, they will be destroyed by God. God will destroy the Vatican, and he will use an assembly of nations to burn her with fire. Now, not only literally, but most importantly, spiritually, he's going to put his sword into the hand of the king of Babylon. And, of course, sword and fire are spiritual synonyms for word. And, uh, and the, the assembly of nations is going to hate the whore. They're going to hate the Vatican and the abomination of desolation will be placed, a final book of wisdom that will appease all people throughout the earth. Okay, so the Vatican's days are numbered. Their deception is going to be destroyed, but something even more deceptive, Babylon, from an assembly of nations, uh, will be placing a final book of wisdom that will contain, unlike these dumb idols of the Roman Catholic Church, which are all these false scriptures that God talks about in the markets today, um, the Assembly of Nations is going to place a final book of wisdom that will be supported by signs and lying wonders, and it will be given a mouth to speak, and it will be so believable that if you're not sealed with the Holy Spirit, you're going to confess it as the Word of God. That's Those are the cliff notes of what God teaches out of the AV 1611. So, uh, as I mentioned before, I want to go back to the definition of Rome. Uh, it's very important that we understand what the dictionary used to say and what the current Webster's Dictionary says. So the current Webster's Dictionary, I've done a previous lesson on this, was 
revised. You know, Noah Webster died, and the Webster's Dictionary was taken over by, in my opinion, Vatican influence. And I went into that in detail. I'm not going to take the time now to go through it, but now the Vatican is just the papal headquarters in Rome or the papal government. There's no, no more mention of sitting on seven hills or anathemas and denunciations of the Pope. Uh, that's been removed. Why is that? Why change the definition? Is there something wrong with the original? Not according to God. So I wanted to make that point. And I also wanted to remind people that in the Catholic Bible, if we go back to 1610, the year before the authorized version of 1611 came out, it says in the Catholic Bible that not to be with the Pope is to be with Antichrist. So if you're not a Roman Catholic subscribing to the precepts of the papacy or the Pope, you are Antichrist. And that's exactly what I was taught as a young Catholic being brought up in the late 60s, uh, 1970s. Uh, that's what we were taught, that um, if you're Protestant, you're on your way to hell. You're Antichrist. If you're not in the Roman Catholic Church, you're not part of the true church. And that's coming out of the Catholic Bible. So get this information out to people. Please, if you're convicted, pray about it. Um, but it's very clear that um, Christians understand the papacy is Antichrist because the standard is God's word, which reproves Antichrist. But the Catholic Bible just makes a note that, well, if you don't believe us, then you're Antichrist. So they want to be like the Most High. They want to be God on earth. It says in Revelation chapter 17, And there came out came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. And it says in verse 18 in that chapter, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Vatican may be small in terms of its geographic size, but it reigns over the kings of the earth. I show a picture of the Pope with uh, the U.S. President Bush because she is a habitation of devils. There are evil spirits. Every foul spirit, uh, That's they're the home of it. And there is a system in place where they can communicate through evil spirits, kind of like God gives the Holy Spirit to the Christians to edify us as we read his word. They try to imitate God, and they have a network of devils that edify and control people in power, in places of power and influence throughout the world, and they submit to the papacy. Please, again, go on Google Images, and you can, you can see, you know, copyrighted pictures, of course, uh, many, many, many pictures of a diversity of people in places of power and influence submitting to the papacy. Uh, and they don't necessarily profess to be Catholic either. Pope is accused of being Antichrist. It says in the 1610 uh, Catholic Bible, in Matthew chapter 10, note 25, How much more, no marvel, therefore, if heretics call Christ vicar Antichrist. They're referring to non-Catholics as heretics. Uh, when their forefathers, the faithless Jews, called Christ himself Beelzebub. Uh, and that's in reference to a part of scripture. It says in John chapter 5, he meaneth in a margin note, specially Antichrist. How then can the Pope be he, seeing the Jews receive him not? And then it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, in a margin note, how then can the Pope be Antichrist, as the heretics fondly blaspheme, who is so far from being exalted above God, that he prayeth most humbly not only to Christ, but also to his blessed mother and all his saints. So they give themselves away. The Pope prays to dead people. He prays to the blessed mother, which I was taught was Mary, who's been long dead. She needed a savior as much as I do. She had to offer sacrifices under the law of Moses to atone for her sins because she was a sinner. Uh, and that is contrary to what the Catholic Church teaches. The Catholic Church teaches that Mary is without sin and a perpetual virgin. And they, they're able to sell this to people because nobody, hardly anyone, is familiar with God's word, the AV 1611. So 
that's some commentary straight from the Catholic Bible, and you can see the photos that I include. Uh, these are non-copyrighted photos, but there's many more like them uh, on Google Images uh, that people can go to. You can see many pictures of the Pope bowing to statues and crowning Mary and people bowing to the statues of the Pope, and it, it's never-ending. And again, I was once part of this system, which is very seductive until God opens your eyes and you get saved. But you need to have God's word written in your forehead to recognize this stuff as being of the devil. So what does the Catholic Bible say? If, if you, uh, I guess if you're a rich person and you have a lot of money, you can get saved by works or paying indulgences. You can pay money to get your sins forgiven which uh, the vast majority of, of true Christians that I know are not wealthy people. Uh, so we only have the hope of the free gift of Jesus Christ. We don't have worldly money, which God says is his to begin with, to pay for the forgiveness of sins. It says in the book of Tobit, chapter 12, Because alms delivereth from death, and that is it which purgeth sins, and maketh to find mercy and life everlasting. And what they're saying is that you can buy your way to heaven. You can pay money for the forgiveness of sins. Catholics today sell indulgences. You can buy mass cards. You can maybe shorten the time of your loved ones out of a place which they call purgatory. There is no such thing as purgatory according to God. But they use this term where because, you know, we're all sinful people in the flesh, uh, nearly all of us, deserve to be punished and beaten more before we can enter the kingdom of heaven. So we go to a place, according to the Catholic Church, called purgatory, where we get whipped or beaten or tortured or whatever because we're such bad people. And then at some point, uh, after all that punishment, we can enter the kingdom of heaven. Uh, that's what they teach. Of course, God says, and I gave several examples, Hebrews chapter 2, uh, 10 uh, verses 14 and 18 for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified so if you're perfected forever you're not going to a place called purgatory now where remission of these is there is no more offering for sin and then i'm going to put down there in romans chapter 5 what is being referred to but not as the offense all so also is the free gift for if through the offense of one many be dead much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Christ, or Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. Jesus Christ and his salvation is a free gift that you don't have to pay for, and you are sealed until the day of redemption. Uh, that's how powerful the gift of salvation is. So if you're Catholic and you're watching this video, know that if you believe on God's word, which is the AV 1611 Bible in English, and you're a true believer, and God examines your faith, and you will be receiving the Holy Spirit, along with chastening, of course, that God does in this world, uh, and then you'll find the peace that Christians enjoy in their walk here on earth. And you'll be able to please God because of faith and do His will before you die your natural death as a saved person that is now justified because of faith in the incorruptible Word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to keep this on the screen for a short time. These are some references to the Pope. He's called Pharaoh, Leviathan, Prince of Babylon, uh, and, and those are some of the Pope's names. Babylon, the church, is called Sodom in Egypt and the Vatican, uh, which Sodom is a city, Egypt is a country, the Vatican is both spirit, both a city and a country that sits on seven mountains or hills, and I put a reference there. But if you look at the screen, I've noted the identity of the Pope throughout the AV 1611 and the identity of Rome or the Vatican out of the AV 1611. Uh, you know, so places like Ezekiel chapter 28 talk about the Prince of Tyrus, which is the Pope. And also, if you go to Ezekiel 27, just the previous chapter, he's talking about Tyrus or Zidon and referencing Babylon or the Vatican. So 
God has a way of teaching the saints, which are saved Christians, about what's going on in the earth right now by using spiritual language that natural people who are unsaved cannot receive or understand. That's why we know as Christians, God teaches us, Jesus Christ teaches us and leads us to all truth about what is salvation and how is it being attacked here on earth by this Babylon religious and political power and how the whole world lies in deception. This is a prayer, a Catholic prayer. It's called a uh, St. Jude's Novena. Uh, and it basically, you know, you can read the prayer, but I'm going to draw your attention down at the bottom. Uh, first of all, it's a prayer to a dead person that they call St. Jude. And then they say to pray this prayer repetitiously nine times a day, and your prayers will be answered. Okay? God says in Matthew chapter 6, But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. So God doesn't want you to pray in vain repetitions. And there's only one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So uh, there is no mediator uh, like St. Jude to help anyone. It's only Jesus Christ. They use the word sacred zero times in, the, in God's word, but you'll find sacred is a popular word in the Catholic Bibles and, her other, and other Bibles that are influenced by the Catholic Church, such as the NIV. And that's a, sacred is something that is a Catholic, is a Catholic term. And uh, I just wanted to point that out, the sacred heart of Jesus. Uh, well, it never says anything about a sacred heart of Jesus in God's word is what I'm getting to. Um, Jesus Christ is God. He and the Father are one, and he is in his glorified state right now. He is come in the flesh, and all creation fears him. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 18, There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. You don't pray to dead people. You don't try to consult the dead for help. Because what's going to happen is you'll have an unclean spirit or a devil that will wind up, and they're allowed by God to do this, to deceive you, uh, to make you think they're a dead relative. Uh, like a familiar spirit. They may appear as your grandmother. They may appear as your your dead parent or something, But they'll, or, or your child that you lost. They'll take advantage of your fragile state as a person in the flesh, and they will deceive you and mislead you further. So you don't try to communicate with the dead. And that's what exactly what the novena is trying to get people to do, is communicate with the dead. This is another example of a different prayer. Prayer to the Blessed Virgin. Never known to fail. Well, you know, why is that? Because Mary is dead. The true Mary is dead. She needed a Savior, and she will face judgment like all of us will. It says, O most beautiful flower of Mount Carmel, fruitful vine, splendor of heaven, blessed mother of the Son of God, immaculate virgin. So it's a complete blasphemy against the word of God. And it says in God's word in Jeremiah chapter 7 that the pagan children, that's what God's talking about, they make cakes to the queen of heaven. Now, it also says in the Song of Solomon, which is about the Babylonian church interacting with Antichrist, unlike the popular definitions of the people that don't use the AV 1611, Song of Solomon is actually about, uh, about the Babylonian church. And it says, thine head upon thee is like Carmel. Okay, the queen of heaven, the queen in the song is being identified by God like Carmel. So God's pointing out all of these Babylonian corruptions. And he's talking about thy, you know, the hair of thine head like purple, you know, which is one of the colors of, uh, that I mentioned earlier. She was arrayed in purple and scarlet. So they, they worship the queen of heaven. They make cakes to her. In the Catholic Bibles, instead of being drunk on flagons of wines, they, they offer cakes of raisins or raisins to her instead in the biblical text. 
So God outs them all throughout his word. And, and you'll never know that unless you believe on the authorized version of 1611, which is God's word, in English. Further, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God in Romans chapter 3. So, Immaculate Virgin is in reference to the doctrine that the Catholics believe that Mary was born without sin, which is another blaspheme directly against God's word. So, you know, it's, it's probably not a bad thing that I was raised Catholic because I can speak with this or about this with some authority behind me. Uh, having been raised Catholic, and I didn't get saved until I was in my, I think I was 41 years old when I received the Holy Spirit. So I've got a lot of experience as an unsaved person, uh, and I just want to point this out to people. It says that, in Romans chapter 3, God forbid, yeah, let God be true, but every man a liar. God doesn't respect persons. He calls us all liars. We've all come short of his glory. He does, says, don't put any trust in men or confidence in men. He says, let no man glory in men. So God throws all flesh under the, you know, he all flesh is unjustified. You're justified by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, by believing on the incorruptible word of God, and you're born of the Spirit. Your flesh can do no good. So again, you see in this prayer that they encourage repetitious prayer. They say, pray this three times, pray this three times. Again, this is nothing more than the church of Satan, the church of Lucifer, pulling off and appealing to our vain fallen nature, by blaspheming God and praying in vain repetitions and saying words that are in direct conflict with God's word. And God's word is going to judge everyone on that last day. If you don't receive his righteousness, you're going to be judged by every word of God. And you're not going to know what that judgment is if you're not saved, if you don't believe the word of God. If you're a saved Christian, you will be tried by God's word and uh, you'll be suffering loss where you uh, were in a slumber and backslid against God's word, but you'll get a reward if you are compliant in following the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it says in God's word. So this is nothing more than a pagan prayer to dead people with vain repetitions. And uh, it's it's possible that devils are given power to help people in their fragile state by encouraging them to blaspheme more and more by praying more and more of these prayers. When I prayed to statues, my prayers got answered. Pretty scary to think about in hindsight. Uh, the Catholic Church has uh, counsel. Uh, over one billion Catholics get counsel by apparitions that just appear out of the air. Most of the time they don't say who they are, but the Catholics just believe it must be Mary. There's no trying of spirits as God commands us to do in 1 John chapter 4. Uh, and it, whatever the spirit speaks, even though God warns against seducing spirits, deceiving people, especially in the end times, uh, the Catholics just believe this stuff. So it says on June 25th, and I give my sources here, Dear children, give thanks with me to the Most High for my presence with you. My heart is joyful, watching the love and joy in the living of my messages. Many of you have responded, but I wait for and seek all the hearts that have fallen asleep to awaken from the sleep of unbelief. So, so far, if you're not saved, it sounds like a pretty good message. Little children, draw even closer to my immaculate heart so that I can lead all of you toward eternity. Thank you for having responded to my call. Well, the only way to get to eternity in the kingdom of heaven, and it doesn't say the kingdom of heaven here, it just says towards eternity. First of all, everyone's going to have an eternity. It's just the vast majority of people will have an eternity in the lake of fire. That's where they're headed. But if you believe this is in reference to an eternity in the kingdom of heaven, the only way you're going to get there is no man cometh unto the Father, but by the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. You must be born again by believing on him. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's it. 
all this other nonsense of praying to statues, praying these vain repetitions, you know, bowing to statues, dipping your fingers in holy water, confessing your sins to a priest, which is also forbidden by God, uh, and all this other stuff does nothing but add to an eternal punishment in the lake of fire. So you can see as a saved Christian that this is a devil appearing and counseling the Catholic Church under the guise of they think it's Mary with an immaculate heart, but the poor Catholic people, it, and I'm not referring to the people at the top of the pyramid, the evil papacy and cardinals, which, which are the powers of the Vatican, but the, the beguiled people that are putting their trust in the Catholic Church and the apostate Protestants that are subscribing to her merchandise like the false Bibles in the markets today um, are beguiled because they don't know the word of God. So that's my whole point here. It says in Exodus chapter 20 out of God's word, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Well, you can see pictures that I put up of Catholic people bowing to statues. I could have been in one of these pictures, so I'm not in any way making fun of them they just don't know what god's word says and they don't certainly they don't believe god's word okay uh, but they're all in both pictures they've got statues of mary and there's there's great worship and prayers going on a comforting term that the catholic uh hierarchy comes up with is a term called veneration so they they use that even though it's a synonym for prayer and worship uh, it, it just comforts them knowing that if they use the word veneration, it must not be against God or something. It's, it's part of the delusion that you live into, that you live in until you get saved. A Bridge to Babylon is a film that I started working on back in 2007. And I did, uh, you know, and I, I don't publicly go out, but I, I researched for about a decade, uh, and I made a lot of sacrifices, but the, the, the sacrifices that were made the most were my wife and children. And uh, I collected a lot of research. And when, when you had a secular background like me, where I was in compliance for many years, and you unplug and make your full-time passion without any financial incentive, uh, to find the truth of what is going on in God's word and what is happening in this world because you love God and you love people. It gives you an opportunity to reach out and uh, get a lot of information. And one of the, the men that I got in contact with, his name was Kirk DeVitro. Um, he had, one of his parents was Catholic. He was raised under Catholic influence, but I interviewed him. And uh, we asked him about a meeting he went to with Thomas Nelson's publishers. And you can read what's on the screen, but basically what he says is he was invited there. And he was invited there because he was friends with the owner of a bookstore that the meeting was at. And he was seated next to a guy named John Kohlenberger who was involved with the NIV. Okay, And he goes on to tell me, that the Thomas Nelson representative stood in front of all the people at this meeting showing a film strip detailing the history of the King James Bible. Then he made a statement that he couldn't exactly quote, but he could say it in context or substance. He says that the person said, folks, we are educated people here, and what I'm about to say I would never say to our people. So this is a secret conversation now. But we all know that the King James Bible is an inferior translation based on inferior text. So to me, as a former Catholic, this is a high-powered Catholic speaking under the guise of being a Protestant uh, person. Okay, because the Catholic Church, as I was taught, they hate the King James Bible. They, hate the, they really hate the AV 1611 because it outs them as Babylon and their leader is Antichrist. Okay. But every time we have attempted to give your people a more accurate Bible, they won't accept it. Well, saved Christians know they're the voice of Jesus Christ. It says that in the book of John. Um, I believe John chapter 10, my sheep hear my voice and they know me. They will not follow a stranger's voice. I'm paraphrasing a little, but that's what Jesus says. 
Okay, so we have gone back into the King James Bible and we have introduced a few changes in the name of modernizing it to provide you with a transitional bridge to get your people from the King James Bible so eventually they will accept a more accurate Bible. And Kirk DeVitro says once he heard that, he's never really given the New King James Bible a fair hearing because he, he believed it was based on de deceitful purposes. And the New King James Version is just like all these other modern Bibles. It's a, another way of now using the name of King James to introduce a Catholic-influenced text to so-called professing Christians. And you can make that judgment based on what I'm going to show you. So at some time, uh, and this goes back uh, a couple decades, there was a guy named Leo Hendry that controlled Thomas Nelson Publishing. He was very influential in Thomas Nelson. And he was interviewed, and the interviewer said, what gave you the ambition to go from the sort of blue-collar jobs to wanting to become, I guess, a businessman? And Leo Hendry says, lots of demons, which is a Catholic term now, lots of devils that have always caused me to want to succeed. I was blessed with some intellect, some intellectual curiosity as well, and that just drove me. A lot of my early influences came from the Jesuits. The Jesuits are basically the military arm of the Roman Catholic Church, okay, reporting ultimately to the papacy. God says that Leviathan is the prince of Babylon, okay? So the power structure is really the Jesuit army serves the papacy. I was Jesuit trained at both the high school level and at college, and that was a discipline and an environment that sort of forced you to excel, rewarded you for excellence, gave you this intellectual curiosity, and I always knew that I wanted to be something special. Thomas Nelson Publishing owns the copyright of the New King James Version, but they'll also gladly print what is called the King James Version. And then if you're interested in the authorized version of 1611, you have to special order it. Okay, because that's not readily available based on my own personal experiences. So why am I putting this in here? It says, the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Leo Hendry is a very wealthy man. And some of his wealth came from Bible publishing, but not God's word publishing. And I'm going to show you, and you can make your own judgments. So, it says in God's word under 1 John chapter 4, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. Okay, it's, God is very specific here. And every word of God is pure. So it's not for us to have our own interpretations of what God is saying. He's making it very clear. Is, to, is come is present tense. Jesus Christ is in his eternal body. All creation fears and trembles at his presence. Devils also believe and tremble, and Lucifer knows his time is short. So Jesus is not a little baby infant in his mother's arms. He is described in the book of Revelation as having white hair, um, you know, relatively dark skin, uh, and eyes uh, as, you know, as fire burning as lamps, I believe. But Jesus Christ is a picture of... Uh, God in his glorified state. And because we fall short, we fear and tremble at his presence. I mean, think of the most beloved people in the Bible. Daniel and John collapsed in fear when, when there was an appearance there. Uh, and, uh, and so this is what God says. The Catholic Church in the NIB Bible, they don't say is come in the flesh. They just say every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus does not belong to God. Well, you know, Legion acknowledged Jesus. They said, what will you do with us, uh, Jesus Christ, Son of God? Uh, so that, that's another lie of the Catholic Church, but you won't pick up on that unless you're a saved person. And then the New King James changes is come to has come. So they're blaspheming uh, the word of God, consistent with what Leo Hendry just told us and also with what Kirk DeVitro just told us. Okay, I'm going to continue. It says in God's word, and these are just a few examples. I'm not going to make a five-hour video going through everything, but I'm just giving you guys a few examples. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. This is in reference to Wormwood, a final ecumenical Bible 
that people will swear an oath to as it says in the book of Zechariah. Okay, why is the word lamp important? Because God's word is as a lamp according to the book of Psalms. I think that's Psalm 119 verse 105. Thy word is a lamp. So the devil wants to be like the Most High, as it says in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 14, if I remember correctly. And so he creates his own, or he perverts and corrupts and comes up with his own lamp, as it were a lamp, okay? And people die because they believe this nonsense. Catholic Church wants to change the word lamp to torch so that they can conceal what's going on. And if you change a single word, you have a problem anyway. So they get away with it. What does the New King James do? They do the same thing. They change the words so that you don't know what's going on. It says in God's word, for we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. So God tells us many corrupt and many get thrown into the lake of fire. You can't change, you can't add to or delete from or anything to the word of God unless you get blotted out of the book of life. You don't touch scripture. You don't change scripture. You leave it to God to pick out a committee of faithful men who pray for hours a day and fear and tremble at every word they're translating and take time to do it and do absolutely God's will in their fleshly fragile states and do it in such a way that is specified by God. And if an occasional, um, you know, occasional printing faux pas happens, then if that's fine with God, so be it. But we got to believe the truth. What does it say in the Catholic Bible? We're not as many who trade on the word of God. Oh, really? Well, they're liars because that's what God says they do. Through their trafficking and trading, he tells the Pope and he tells Lucifer in Ezekiel chapter 28, that's how they become rich, through trafficking and trading on the word of God. So they're liars anyway because there is no truth in them. And they don't acknowledge that many corrupt the word. So I'm just asking the, the Catholic Church hierarchy, if you really believe your Bibles, then, then uh, why are there so many different versions? Of course, the New King James follows the same concept. They change corruption to peddling. And they say they don't peddle, but they're getting rich off of selling copyrighted scriptures. Okay, they copyright these corrupt Bibles uh, to make a lot of money. Uh, a Bible that may cost $2 to produce, they sell for 20 making a lot of money. And it, none of it's God's word. And it's all go, it, all of these works are going into the lake of fire with them if they don't get saved. It says in Revelation chapter 18, And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, referring to Babylon, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine wood and all manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beast and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. So, for the saved Christian, God is spiritually describing her false Bibles of Rome. Because gold is wisdom, silver is understanding that comes from words. See the book of Psalms, where God describes his word as silver. Precious stones are the prophets, Jesus being the chief precious stone, precious and elect. Uh, and the rest of this merchandise is all found in her Bibles. But the natural man doesn't receive these things, so God purposes it that natural people are going to think of just simply the natural riches here, which the Vatican also um, has obtained, and they won't see the spiritual things. But there's natural slaves and there's spiritual slaves. You will find a slave explosion in her merchandise, as I will show you, and you will also see how powerful God's word is by the natural slaves that she has. It says in 1 Peter, Wherefore it is contained in Scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. If you believe on the chief cornerstone, the chief precious stone, you will not be confounded. And it also says, He that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Confounded 
are those that put their trust in graven images, which are referencing Babylon's Bibles, their false, corrupt scriptures. The merchants will weep. The most corrupt business on earth that I've ever experienced is the filthy Christian market where God's word is not found anywhere, and the merchants warmly receive and sell Babylon's merchandise. doesn't matter if you call yourself a Baptist, Protestant, Catholic. It doesn't matter. If you're out to turn a prophet, and I'm not talking about making a missionary, making a bare-bones sustenance, being directed by God to get the truth of God's word out in the mission field. I'm talking about the slick-talking people that wear suits, they get their own TV programs. They sell their books. They're beloved, best-selling Christian authors. They sell their silly DVDs. They receive the praise of men. Uh, it all leads to hell. My own personal experience. Don't get in the Christ business to make a single penny because you were given a free gift. Freely give, as God says. You start thinking of yourself as a big shot and trying to turn a profit, you're going to worship Lucifer. And that's because the Lord has spoken it. It's the filthiest business on earth. The most evil and sinister people I have ever met are not drug dealers. They're not child molesters. And I've met those types of people before. They're not criminals. And I've met those types before. They're the filthy professing Christians that say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, brother. Oh, praise Jesus. Those are the filthiest type of people because those are the ones that if they're trying to turn a prophet off the word of God, are the most purely evil people, and you guys wouldn't believe the stories I would tell you. Even if you were true Christians, it would be hard for you to believe some of the things that I've seen and experienced. But this is the filthiest business on earth. The Lord has spoken it. That's what Jesus Christ hot button was, making merchandise in the temple of God. Slaves in Bibles. Slaves is a, a word that appears twice in God's word. One in the Old Testament, one in the New Testament. The Old Testament, he's asking people, are you a servant or a slave? In the New Testament, he reveals, well, Babylon's got slaves. If you're a saved Christian, you're a servant of the Most High. You're not a slave. Well, in the New King James and beyond, after Vatican II especially, the word slave was introduced into her merchandise and her merchandise, as God says, contains slaves and souls of men. You're going to the lake of fire. Come out from her, my people. Get out of these false, corrupt, modern Bibles. Get this information out to people. They contain slaves on a spiritual level. Do they contain slaves on a natural level? Does the Babylonian church have slaves? Okay, I'm not going to read all of this, but I'm going to point this out. that there's, And you don't have to believe every testimony you read. But there's published books out there written by people that claim to be MK Ultra slaves of the Vatican Church. And they talk about this. And they talk about how they were introduced into a covenant with the Catholic Church and how the Pope has all the secrets locked away at the Vatican. You don't have to believe everyone's testimony, but there is great content here as far as how the Vatican allegedly groomed attractive women to become MK Ultra slaves, to seduce politicians, and to obtain secret information so that they can tr control political and religious fi uh, figures that are in high places. Okay? Uh, in influential politicians and televangelists, those types of people are controlled by the Vatican according to the testimonies here. This is another testimony by a lady that is called. Her name is Susan Ford, but she goes by the name Bryce Taylor in her book, Thanks for the Memories. And she testifies of traumas in the Catholic Church and how she was able to be used by them and abused by them as an MK Ultra slave. And so uh, I'm not going to read all the content there, but you guys can pause the video if you're convicted. And, uh, and you can see she, she was used to seduce politicians and religious figures as well and she was abused and she talks about having a split personality and and she was not willfully engaging in any of this they they manipulated and tortured her she's now a saved christian as is the previous woman i mentioned according to their own testimonies 
There's another woman, uh, her name is called Spali. I'm not sure if that's her real name or not, but she said she was an Illuminati programmer. The Illuminati being another word for the Vatican uh, or the Jesuit order, uh, Los Alumbrados, uh, the Illuminated Ones. Uh, and uh, she worked at a Christian school, not a Catholic school, uh, but a Christian school because what better place to put your uh, high-ranking Vatican programmers than a Christian school where you can seduce people that would otherwise want to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in a Christian sense, not a Catholic sense. Uh, she claims to have witnessed satanic human sacrifice beneath the Vatican where she was taken. She says, there are many of the Illuminati members are brought to the Vatican for indoctrination and training. And she links the Vatican to the top tier of the Illuminati as God teaches us in his word. She was freed by Jesus Christ. She is now a Christian. I gave a reference to her interviews as well. Again, you don't have to believe any one of these testimonies. I'm just saying these line up exactly with God's word. So uh, pray for these people that, that God would... Uh, keep them safe, and continue to use them for his glory now that they're freed from the Babylonian captivity they were in. Aliens. I'm going to talk briefly about the alien agenda. We're saturated with supernatural themes and, and UFOs and alien themes and Bigfoot on the media. And praise God, the, the, you know, the prince, the power of the air is Lucifer. He, he's the god of this earth. And that's what God says. If you don't believe God, you're going to believe the devil by default. Because the devil's job is to cast doubt on the word of God. Yea, hath God said. And you only get born out of this world by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. So my question is, why were, were the, word, the word alien or aliens were introduced like slaves on a hugely widespread level in Babylon's Bibles after Vatican II, or Babylonian-influenced Bibles after Vatican II. Why is that? Well, the Vatican says aliens could exist. Now they're coming out after all this time, and of course God doesn't say anything about aliens. He just says that uh, Jesus Christ is not of this world, but Lucifer is of this world because he's the God of this world. Lucifer and the fallen angels were cast into this world uh, and given dominion here. There's no such thing as an alien unless, if your definition is not of this world, then Jesus Christ would be an alien, and that's it. Okay? Um, the search for forms of extraterrestrial life, he says, does not contradict the belief in God. Well, yes, it does. Uh, God never says anywhere in his word that extraterrestrial life is going to influence us in any way. It's all Lucifer and the fallen angels. Okay? free from sin, just as multiple forms of life on earth, so there could exist intelligent beings in outer space created by God, and some aliens could even be free from original sin. Well, that's not what God says. God says there's no such thing as an alien from out of this world coming here and visiting us that is free from original sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. So don't speculate. Believe God's word. Okay? And, um... And, and that's yet another example of how silly this all is. Yes, Satan has been given power, signs, and lying wonders to deceive, if it were possible, the very elect. Have I seen what's, what people would call a UFO? Absolutely I have. I've crossed the border of U.S. and Mexico on foot hundreds of times. And I've seen um, like giant orbs down there moving in unnatural uh, speeds and uh, positions. Uh, in the sky. So yeah, they, they exist, but it's not It's not out of this world, it's of this world. It's uh, The power that Satan has been given has been great. So, you know, it doesn't matter if it's people can speculate what's going on. Is it the U.S. military, whatever? It's all because of ultimately the Most High God choosing and sending to delusions to the heathens that don't believe on his word. He's going to let Lucifer's dominion run and Lucifer will deceive the entire world or the whole world as God has spoken through the prophets. Okay, and then you can read what I said down at the bottom here, or what they said about Charles Darwin, who came up with the theory of evolution that the papacy has subscribed to in the past. And as I mentioned before, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one, as it says in God's word in the book of Romans. So in conclusion... 
non-slumbering Christians recognize the Vatican as Babylon and the papacy as Antichrist. And they always have, and a, a non-slumbering Christian always will because of the power God gives through the Holy Spirit bearing witness to the Word of God. To counter this discernment, the scripture must be broken to cause slumber. And one prime example for saved people is the King James Bible sold in the markets today has been broken. It's absolutely not the same Bible that King James authorized and the translators translated, but somehow the devil's been given power to sell it. And uh, it, it, even though it has oil in it, and there's many people that have been saved out of the King James Bible in the markets today, there's a spirit of slumber attached to it because the scripture cannot be broken. And it has been broken. Uh, the books of the Apocrypha were also removed, which helps to conceal Babylon's identity. I mentioned the Apoc Apocrypha briefly. The book of Tobit says to pay money to get your sins forgiven, alms deliver from death. And that's part of the Babylonian canon of scripture that is also a, uh, in the Christian Bible as a book of the Apocrypha, so that we always are reminded by God who Babylon is. It's the papacy, the, the, the Vatican, the, the Babylonian church. Her Part of her canon was placed between the testaments for that reason, to keep our reproof skills sharp so that we would never forget the identity of Babylon. But they were taken out. Nobody's pushing back on it. So, you know, it's, it's no wonder that, uh, that f very few people are saved today because of what has been allowed to happen to the word of God, breaking the scripture removing, tampering with things. This allows papal doctrine to creep into churches and create both confusion and pride. Lucifer, his antichrist, and devils try to counterfeit God and cause rebellion against God's word, as I have uh, showed you guys in this presentation. Modern Bibles such as the New King James, the NIV, the NASB, the ESV, the New Living Translation, the Revised Standard Version, etc., 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 Follow papal decrees, as it says in Job chapter 41, verse 19. Out of his mouth go burning lamps, the Antichrist. Lamps, plural, many Bibles that say many different things, but there is a pattern to them all. And none of them that are false will confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh in John, 1 John chapter 4, the first three verses. None of them will, because they're, they're Antichrist Bibles. So thank you guys for watching and listening. Uh, and I, I hope that everyone learned at least one thing that they didn't know before. And I encourage everyone to share this video testimony. If you're convicted, pray about it. I'm not big on asking people to subscribe to my channel or anything. I'm doing this because of the love of God and the love of my neighbor. And that's it. I'm not doing this because I want people to think, well, wow, look at this guy or, or whatever, what he's done. I just want people to know the truth. And I think that's what every Christian has a goal of is just get the truth of God's word out to your neighbors because you love them and because you love the most high Jesus Christ. So thank you. And I will uh, look forward to next week's uh, lesson.